Hey gang, Scott here, continuing our dive into the masking tools in On1. We're talking about the masking bug, and in this video, we'll cover two shapes, center and edges. Now, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, go check them out. Uh, masking bug in particular, we use when we have a pretty large area of our photo that we need to work with. We need to uh, either remove or add a particular effect or local adjustment to a pretty large area of the photo. Something bigger than what we would do with hand painting and the masking bug is great for that it's got a variety of shapes we're going to talk about two of them in here center and edges so uh, let's go through the controls of the bug and then i'll show you a couple of examples of it in action I'll continue with this photo here we've been working with this photo for all of the masking bug videos Let's add a color adjustment uh, there'll be no change right now but we need a filter to work with open up our masking area and click view and choose the masking bug. So I've got my masking bug open and I have these two shapes we haven't talked about yet, center and edges. We have the same types of controls as we do with all the other masking tools. We have opacity, we can set a color range, we can have more than one. And let's just put center on, on the, the photo here. And first off, you know, how does this get its name? You know, why center and why edges? You know, if I change that to edges, it's an invert, right? So why center, why edges? Well, I'm working with an effects filter. And by default, the filter is applied everywhere. If I then take a masking bug with a center shape, I'm masking away from the center of the bug. If I have an edges shape, I'm masking away from things outside the edges of the bug. So that's where the names come from. And I'll be honest, in practice, because with a local adjustment, this is the opposite. Because the local adjustment, you are by default not having anything applied. So you choose center and it will apply in the center. And if you choose edges, it will apply outside. I almost always get them confused. So I'll just drop one on here. And if it's the opposite of what I want, I'll switch it to the other shape. So just know center and edges are basically inverts of one another. And so uh, you can just pick one, drop it on there. And if it's not what you wanted, choose the other and you're good to go. The controls for both are the same. We have our center pin. We can position the bug. We have the rotation control so we can rotate the bug. And then we have four control points, like north, south, east, west. They're mirror images of one another. So as I take this like north point and pull it downward, south comes in at the same amount. And if I grab this west point, uh, the same thing happens with the opposite side it pulls in. So we can make this into a circle. We can make it into a very narrow oval. We can angle it. It's quite a versatile shape for your masking bug. And then the last control is the feather on the outside, right? We can make the feather very large or very small. So our control points, position, rotation, these four compass points are setting your transition point. Where does the transition start from full strength out to no strength with your feather? and then adjusting your feather. And as before, we have opacity, which will control the strength of the mask overall, or I should say the strength of the masking bug overall. This is unique and specific to this bug. Uh, and then you still have your opacity on the far side with your density slider. If you recall that, we had a similar control. Uh, we can add multiples. So if I add a second one, um, the, the, the challenge usually becomes how are you going to adjust these two things but you you can start to stack up multiples of the center shaped bugs usually if you mix and match you end up with interesting problems so you can do something with additive approach or in this case a subtract approach for multiple center shapes or multiple edge shapes if you need to do that I tend to work with one and then augment with other masking tools like the brushes or the line masks or other things, uh, but you can do multiples. And if you have more than one and realize you don't need it, you can select one and delete it. 
So with those controls in mind, uh, let's look at a couple of examples of how we'd use this in practice. How would we use the center or edges shaped masks in practice? All right, let's reset all of that and turn off our mask view. I'd added a color adjustment and I'd like to add a little bit of green into the trees here. So I'll choose the foliage style and that's gonna make those trees very, very green, uh, too much for my taste. The opacity slider for the color adjustment overall and I'm just watching the trees as I adjust that. That's nice, uh, that's pretty good. I really want to highlight the tree that's on the left, the one that's got that nice bit of morning glow going on. And um, I, I wanna make sure I'm not introducing too much green anywhere else in the photo because like the greens that are down in the in the, the yellow grasses, I want the yellows to stay yellow. You know, there's a lot of a lot of yellow and green, a lot of green and yellow. They they, they overlap quite a bit. And so if I toggle this before and after, it looks pretty tame. But I want to make sure. So with my masking area open, I've got my masking bug. In this case, I want to have the stuff that's outside of the trees. If I imagine drawing an oval around my trees, I want stuff that's outside of it to not be affected by color adjustment. That is an edges shape. So if I click on that, I'll press the O key so we can see that indeed we're only affecting the inside here. And now I can position my masking bug and I'd want that mostly biased to this tree, probably pretty tight on it, feather it out some. Maybe I'll make that a little bit more stretched like that. And so I'm applying this color to this area and kind of letting it trickle off and fade away on the outside. So before and after, if I put that back up at full strength for a moment, before, after. Notice that the color fades off from here to here. I might even make this a tighter bug, feather it out more before and after, and then rain back that color in. So I'm adding a little more richness to my, 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 my favorite tree and then <laughs> letting the other ones fade off a little bit. Uh, so that's, that's one example of using a, uh, a, a radial shaped, a center or an edges shaped bug. I wanna show you another one. This one's one of my favorites. It's to uh, create like off camera light accents. And uh, uh, it's easy if I just explain how it works. You can do this with a photo filter. You can do it with a local adjustment and temperature. I'll use the photo filter as the example here. Uh, so uh, let, let's, go, let's go do that. In this scene, the sun is off to camera right and we know it's higher in the sky because it's morning and we're getting this directional light coming in. You can accentuate that and, and shape it somewhat with a masking bug. Let me add a filter and I'll choose the photo filter and the color from the more section. Let's choose yellow. So this is a nice warm inviting you know sunshine kind of feel. I don't want that much strength on it and let's play with the polarizer slider just kind of watching the scene saying all right let's let's just give this a little more a little more feeling of sunlight right that's before and that's after. I like it, but I don't want it to be everyone to be a little directional. So I can use a shape, you know, imagine, imagine an oval that's kind of coming through here and imagine that light just kind of bleeding down. We'll do it with a mask. And for the view, let me switch this with my keyboard shortcuts here to a red overlay, which we can't see right now because I haven't put the shape on yet. You can change that here in the mask view mode if you don't have a keyboard shortcut. But let's choose a center shape. And as I said, I always get them wrong, right? I, I want to have the opposite of this. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, switch this over to uh, two edges and 
Command or Control minus to zoom out. So I can take the center of my masking bug, which right now is this yellow color. That's like my sunshine, right? And then I'll shape it this way and then have it just bleed out into the scene. So I'm creating this directional light and I can make that really, really just fade off super, super gradually. Let me press the O key and I'll turn off the, uh, the overlay. And that mask looks like very, very big, right? You know, there's this, this whole big bleed going on. But before that and after, you can see that, you can see that light, right? And it's, it's very, very subtle on the far left of the photo, and it's much stronger in the far right. It's, you know, it's at full strength up here inside of my, my bug. I mean, I can't even see the full bug. If I hit Command and Control minus a bunch more times, now you can see where this thing is sitting. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, uh, this odd set of controls so I can get a nice gradual fade all the way through the photo. Command or Control plus to move back in one notch there. And then we can you know, just refine the, the results here. If I push the amount really far, you can see that it's stronger on the right, weaker on the left, like we were talking about. And that gives me this nice little accent of directional light coming in. And I think I'm gonna be done with that. So I'll hit my, my Z key, Command zero, go back to the full view there before and after, right? So added this, this radial shaped filter or a mask rather to get the photo filter, just kind of bleeding that in. And you could do the same technique with say, just the temperature adjustment in a uh, local adjustment. You know, the temperature slider make it a little bit warm and do that same type of operation. So that's just a couple of examples of using center and edges. Uh, I will use them a lot as a, as a starting point because usually I have an element in the photo like we saw before. We had this tree. You know, maybe I want to do something with uh, with you know these these two trees over here. Mentally, I just see them circled in you know some type of oval, and I'm either going to downplay something or play up something. So that's how center and edges work. Uh, recapping, like, you know, the, the, I guess the key takeaways is you can adjust the shape using the four control points you have, like at north, south, east, west. You can adjust the angle. You can adjust the feather. And if you don't remember which center or edges to, to use, just pick one. And if it's the wrong one, as you saw me do in this video, then just flip it over to the, uh, the other choice. Because when you're moving between effects and local adjustments pretty quickly, at least for me, I'll often get confused between the two. So I'll pick one and if it's wrong, choose the other and you're good to go. I hope you found the video useful. Got any other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.